Hi, my name is Mike and I'm a science teacher at the Monshire Museum. And all of this week we are going to be working with Chain Reactions, one of my absolutely favorite programs that we get to do at Monshire. Chain Reactions are just a wonderful way to explore cause and effect, balance and unbalanced forces, to get to test and try out your ideas with immediate feedback. And now, we could build a chain reaction machine all by ourselves, but we love it as a collaborative endeavor. So this week I'm going to have the help of my eight-year-old son, plus pretty much free range of his playroom here. Although I've pretty much made this into my home office over the last couple weeks. Um, but truth be told, it's not a whole lot different than my workspace back at the museum. And I have visions of turning this room into just one grand, massive chain reaction by the end of the week. But I may be getting just a bit ahead of myself here. And for chain reactions at the museum, we have materials that I've gotten to spend all sorts of time in the museum workshop designing and building, all purposefully made to really help make chain reactions as straightforward and as successful as possible. But today, we're going to start by searching around our house for things we think might make wonderful chain reaction materials just the way they are. So let's get started. So here are a couple categories, types of things to be looking for. I mean, you can find some pictures and more information through the Montshire at Home sites. Um, but essentially we're looking for building materials. We are looking for things that roll and move. Some simple machines like ramps and levers. And then also some of those materials that might inspire. Um, spark your imagination, give you some ideas of really fun ways to create your chain reactions. For building, there are probably a variety of different blocks and things that you have. In the absence of blocks and building toys, uh, cardboard boxes. Uh, I have some mac and cheese boxes here, but really any size as well. We can stack these up. Uh, build a tall structure and you'll, you'll hear me say this probably more than once but gravity is our friend when we're working here. If we can build things high, topple them over, roll things down, that potential energy uh, is going to be of great use in our chain reactions. My mac and cheese boxes also can become nice dominoes, passing that energy along. We have then things that roll and move. You probably have a variety of different balls. Here's a soup can, a roll of tape even, different cars and things you might have. If we are rolling things, we'll need uh, ramps, things to roll them down. Um, here's a block. You probably have different tracks and building toys. One I even constructed here, uh, but even paper. Cardboard tubes are going to work well for those. Levers. Uh, spoons can be levers. There are different compound lever utensil things we have, or even then constructing my own little uh, uh, seesaw type of action out of some plastic and some other building toys can be fun ways of moving things along. My spoon, if I uh, give that a pivot point too, my spoon can be an the next lever, a way to, to cause some action to happen. And then the things that just are fun and expire, inspire us to try some cool things. My big gummy bear, I could probably find some fun ways to use that, or a, a mini lacrosse stick here, uh, maybe even uh, a motor and fan. I could add a little complexity to it, can give me some uh, some cool ways of working that into my chain reaction. So, head out, see what you can find at home to start building with, and we'll come together and we'll figure out some simple ways then to start to incorporate these into our chain reactions. 